John Gibson, the Anaheim Ducks star goaltender, reportedly open to a trade. Today, we're going to make the case of whether or whether not the Leafs should look into bringing him to Toronto to be the new number one netminder between the pipes. That's what we got in store for you on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's Brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leafs-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also now catch us up on video on YouTube, Locked On Leafs on YouTube. We've hit a thousand subscribers, which has allowed us to give away an Austin Matthews jersey to one of you lucky subscribers. At some point throughout today's show, we're going to give away the second clue in the Name That Leaf jersey giveaway. We already gave away the first clue yesterday, so if you missed yesterday's podcast, you got to go back and listen for it. At some point throughout that show, we dropped the first clue. We have all together getting increases start difficult and get increasingly a little bit easier and easier and hopefully by friday the fifth day uh, our final clue you guys should be able to decide who that player is and you'll comment on friday's video for a chance to win the austin matthews jersey all right um speaking of jerseys there could be a brand new goaltender wearing a toronto maple Leafs jersey in the future if you look at leafs twitter uh john gibson is reportedly open to a trade uh nick alberga reporting this that he is open to a trade so good scoop by nick we're actually going to have him on the show in a couple of days um to, to kind of chat on and get his thoughts on it see if he knows anything else here is the uh the tweet there the alberga bomb hearing ducks goaltender john gibson is open to being dealt and belief out of anaheim is he's informed the club of that hashtag fly together so uh appreciate that that's at the golden muzzy on twitter nick alberga with the scoop Dave, um, your initial thoughts on uh, on this and whether or not you think it's something that the Maple Leafs should pursue. Because Leafs Twitter seems to really think they should. But what do you think? So before I even go further into the Alberga bomb, uh, there was a follow-up tweet to that. I don't know if you saw it from David Pagnotta. Mm-hmm. He, he shared that because there were some people trying to, you know, pour a little water on the on the alberga bomb uh saying that gibson's agent hadn't talked to anaheim like this wasn't something that was going on but uh david pagnotta who we all know has had some sco- good scoops in the past said that uh nick had good info here the ducks took calls on gibson ahead of the trade deadline as he rep- reported in march gibson open to moving explains why trade talks are expected to continue leading the nh Leading into the NHL draft next month, he owns a 10 team no trade list. So, like, that's the thing. The first and foremost is like, we have to really deduce the rumors here. I mean, we've we've heard Elliot Friedman talk about it as well. So, I feel like at this Kevin point, Week, Kevin Weeks also came out and said, you know, Nick's Nick's has good info here, and he kind of corroborated that. Yeah. So, I think Nick Alberga had the scoop, and it's correct. The intel no. is the intel, the intel is pretty good, folks. Um, and the other thing, too, is, yeah, there's been quite a debate as to whether this is the right move for the Leafs. And look, I understand that with the way that things have been going with Jack Campbell, people think the Leafs might be going in a certain direction with the um, with their goaltending position. I actually listened to Overdrive, and I think uh, Jamie Noodles McClendon gave him actually a really good thought process of why I think a lot of teams are thinking about doing with the goaltending position, because we got teams right now in the Stanley cup final that have two different styles that they've gone to with their goaltending. Yep. You've got the lightning who have the stud elite net minor and Andre Vasilevsky, who I think if you watch the performance in the playoffs have made a lot of people think, you know what? I think we need to go out and get that elite starter. I think also Carrie price last year, 
also added to that as well. Then you got the Colorado Avalanche, who are in the totally opposite direction. They've got two guys that have kind of, I mean, Darcy Kemper was the starter, but if you if you're trying to equate that, he's not on the level of an Andre Vasilevsky. They've got a little bit of a tandem working here after they didn't want to pay Grubauer and went with a plan B option that wasn't a cheap plan B option, but still nonetheless not an Andre Vasilevsky like. So I think some teams are really going to watch the Stanley Cup final and determine can a team beat the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are kind of the team that everyone's comparing to, right? They're the measuring stick. Can you beat a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning without having that true elite number one goaltender? If you ask the Leafs, they might think that having an Andre Vasilevsky of their own might have meant something different for them in the playoffs. I think Jack Campbell was good, but he didn't exactly win them the series, right? He didn't do an Andre Vasilevsky in game seven. So I, I guess that's where some people are going with this, that a John Gibson can be that goaltender based on what we have seen from him in the past. And I know a lot of people have bring it, bringing up how he's played the last few years. We've seen Carey Price mm-hmm. have struggles similar to John Gibson in the past. And then yeah. all of a sudden you see Carey Price turn into an unstoppable brick wall in the playoffs because that's the talent that level that he has. And so I I think John Gibson, like how there's not many goaltenders like John Gibson are going to be out on the market looking for a a trade or looking for a move. Right. So you, so are you team bring in John Gibson? Obviously the price has to be right. Yeah. If, if, if it's an equal deal, you think he's the right move? I think he could. Yeah. I think he'd be the right move. I think you're, this is the one position that personally, I just think you, you have to, invest properly in yeah you know, having a guy like john gibson means some of these other younger goaltenders you can give them as much time as they need and they can learn and grow into that role i think andre vasilevsky was allowed to grow into that role because he had ben bishop with him right, right. igor shesterkin had henrik lungfist with him to grow into that role so i think if you're the leafs one you need you need some stability at that position some and you do not know what Jack Campbell's future is like. So this is, I think you have to go with the more certain option right now. And I might be John Gibson. Yeah. So let's John Gibson. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, he, the player, his age and whatnot, the cap hit and what that actually means. Bring in John Gibson. So you're bringing in a guy who's going to be 29 years old when the league year starts next season, which for a goaltender isn't overly old. That's right about uh, where most goalies are still in their prime. Uh, you know, usually goalies can play a little bit longer or, or hit their prime a little bit later in, in life. Gibson just happened to be a superstar right from his early 20s. And the last couple of seasons has been too terrific, but um, he still has f- five more years left on this deal. Uh, starting next season. So he's got five more years, which will take him all the way to 26, 27 at $6.4 million per season, $6.4 million. So that's where it's going to get tricky for the Maple Leafs is trying to fit this, this, this price point in, I suppose uh, of, 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 uh, I was going to say Ben Bishop because you said Ben Bishop a moment ago of John Gibson because we keep looking at at Jack Campbell's and we're like, ah, can't pay that guy more than four and a half million. Just can't do it. Can't afford to pay five, five and a half. It's too much. Meanwhile, everyone's ready to go all in on six point four million dollars on John Gibson. It is kind of funny because if you look at the two goalies over the past three years, Campbell's actually been the better goalie of the two. Yeah. <laughs> so you stated the reasons for why you are game trade John Gibson. I'm going to play devil's advocate and give a couple of reasons as to why maybe the Maple Leafs should steer clear of John Gibson. But before I get to that, Dave, watch other good folks about uh, today's show sponsor, Built Bar. Yep. And guess what, folks? When you think that Built couldn't come up with any new flavors, they have truly outdone themselves this time. I'm going to tell you a little bit about their brand new flavor called Mud Pie. Mud Pie. Mud Pie is the new Bill flavor that is available in both a bar and a Mud Pie Puff. 
So not sure if you're not sure what mud pie tastes like, this is a new flavor from Built Bar. Let me explain it to you. If you're a chocolate fan, this has got everything you're looking for. The new mud pie bar is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse, smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. So what I got to tell you folks is you got to try the new mud pie flavor as soon as possible. You need to hurry because guess what? They are only available for a limited time at built.com to taste the deliciousness for yourself. I actually ordered some. I am waiting for, I am patiently waiting for my new order of from built.com. Not convinced. Luckily we saved the best less. It's actually good for you. No, really all built products are low calorie, high protein and low sugar. Mud pie is packed with six, 16 grams of protein and only 150 calories and eight grams of sugar. Imagine all that chocolatey goodness for eight grams of sugar. It's like your mom baked the most delicious creamy chocolate mud pie and wrap it up just for you. Mud pie bars are puff and puffs are available at built.com right now, but you're going to have to act fast because they are delicious and they're not going to last long. What's great about built is all their bars made with collagen proteins, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You're going to love the new Mud Pie Built Bar and Built Puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need a gr- to take a grab, grab something for a quick bite, especially at night if you have a little bit of craving, Built is the perfect protein bar and they test, taste better than a candy bar. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, cookies and cream crumble, stop drooling, get to Built.com, order your box of Mud Pie and Puffs now. You won't regret it. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. So remember, that is promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order at built.com. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease Podcast. I'm Mike DeStefano. I've got Dave Morissuti with me. We're your hosts here at Locked On Leafs. And tell you what, Dave, why don't we go ahead and give the second clue to the Name That Leaf giveaway right now let's get right into it and give it away um if you are not yet subscribed to the channel you will not win this jersey so if you do want to win a brand new uh home austin matthews jersey uh make sure you're subscribed because on friday you'll have a chance to name that leaf after listening to all five clues through this week and then on monday we're gonna announce the winner and if you're not subscribed to the podcast you ain't going to win it, and we're going to have to pick a brand new winner. So make sure that you are subbed up. If you're listening via audio, go subscribe on uh, on YouTube just to make sure that you are subscribed, and then uh, you can make yourself eligible for that terrific prize. So time for the second one. Again, if you missed the first clue, got to go back to yesterday's podcast episode and get the first clue. But for today, the second clue in the Name That Leaf Austin Matthews jersey giveaway is... This former Maple Leaf was drafted out of the WHL. And speaking of the WHL, congratulations to the Edmonton Oil Kings for being the dub champs. Uh, they defeated, who they beat today? 2 nothing. Can't remember who they beat. Let me look it up in two points. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Seattle Thunderbirds. They beat the Thunderbirds 2 nothing in game six tonight. Uh, so they will advance and be the whl representatives at the memorial cup um so yeah but the former maple leaf that we're talking about is a former whl draft pick all right let me get into maybe some of the reasons why the Leafs should be a little bit hesitant on john gibson I think first and foremost is the price, right? I think we got to look at the $6.4 million. And to me, that is a little bit of a deterrent, just knowing, you know, that goaltenders don't necessarily play. Like you just don't have workhorse workhorse goaltenders anymore. And this is a player who's played a lot of hockey. He's got a lot of tread, uh, you know, gone, you know, burning the off the tires here. And injuries have been a little bit of a concern. In the last three years, the stats haven't quite been there for him. You know, early in his career, he was one of the best goaltenders and looked like he was going to be an absolute stud. Um, You know, coming into the NHL at an early, early age, 
ended up with a 919 save percentage, a 914 save percentage, a 920 save percentage, 924, a 207 goals against, a 222 goals against. Like this guy had terrific numbers. But you look at his numbers the last three years, they've really fallen off a cliff. But, uh, you know, like he's got a save percentage of 904 in the last three years and a goals against of above three. He had a three goals against two years ago, a 298 last season, and this year a 319 goals against through 56 games. And if you want to look and take a deeper dive into the analytics portion of things, um, I went and I, I looked at the last three seasons. So it's a pretty big sample size of of Josh, of, uh, of uh, John Gibson in the last three years among the goaltenders who have played at least 3,000 minutes this season, uh, or not this season, but <laughs> out of uh, the last three seasons, rather, John Gibson has been not that great if we want to be honest with you his goal saved above average over that uh over that time is well i just had it and then it ended up refreshing on me oh let me find it one sec gibson 45th so it's ranked 45th out of a possible 58 goaltenders who have played at least 3,000 minutes in the last three years 45th out of 58 that's not terrific and what that means is he's actually allowing more goals than what's expected based on average goaltending. So he's actually been slightly below average the last three years. Um, that's not overly uh, – that's it's a slightly concerning. You look at also the, the high danger save percentage. It's not overly high. Again, he's about middle of the pack and high danger save percentage, which was another issue with Jack Campbell this year. So do you want to go back down that road again? I'm not so sure. But ultimately, it's a guy who's going downhill a little bit. Um, and, and I can't quite figure out if it's the play in front of him or if it's him who's declining. But the numbers would suggest when it comes to expected goals – and goals against that he's not really making many more saves than what's expected. And if anything, he's actually allowing more goals than expected. And that goes basically tells me that he's been a slightly below average goalie last three years. Do you want to pay 6.4 million for that for this season? And the next five, that's a big roll of the dice. If you ask me, and then what's it going to cost to get this guy as well is another big question mark because John Gibson has said that he'd be open to a trade, but we're not too sure how Anaheim feels or what they're going to want for their quote unquote franchise goaltender. So I would be a little weary with this one. I, I know that it's a big flashy name and he's been the apple of the eye of Lee fans for like five years now, but ultimately <sighs> I don't know, man. The numbers scare me a little bit when you start to dig into it and what he was compared to what he is now. Not sure I'd be willing to make that type of commitment to, to John Gibson at that price. So the only thing I'm going to say about that is the Anaheim Ducks are not the same team that they were those years ago. Yeah. This is like ever since really, I'll even say – when Bruce Brujo left, that's when John Gibson was at his best. That's when the Anaheim Ducks were at their best. The Randy Carlisle years, they kind of flooded around being an okay team. But as soon as Dallas Aikens took over, that team has been on a nosedive in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of his, uh, in terms of their their play, just overall play, but especially defensive play. Like they don't have the stud defenseman that they used to. Um, I'm going to bring up actually a tweet from um, that I saw because I know a lot of people have been bringing up the similar numbers that you've been bringing up. Yeah. Um, so he brought up actually the fact that his expected goals against like his actual goals against is yeah. higher than the expected numbers, which is what I was saying. So if you look at it, I mean, he's allowing more than what he's expected to. So if you're faulting the team, yeah. The team is bad, and sure, they're allowing a lot more, but he's also not saving any more than he right. should. 
so I, I, I'm, I'm trying to see this is a, this is where, you know, and you see those numbers, you say, OK, even though the team has been bad, he hasn't exactly raised his level of play either. Um, I, I'm just trying to, you know, we've put seen those back up, put those back up for a second, because I think I do see a trend that kind of goes towards my theory of drop yeah. off the last three years, to be honest with you. Um yeah, if we could put that back up on YouTube for our YouTube folks, I'll explain it, obviously, for those listening on podcast. So this is a statistics the last six years. So remember how I said the last three years we've seen a drop off. So you look at the first three full seasons in the NHL. He was expect his expected goals against average was supposed to be 269, but his actual goals against average was 222. So he was saving more than he was expected to allow. And that's the the sign of a goaltender who bails out his team a lot. You look at 17, 18, the following year, expected to for, to have a goals against average of 302, but had an actual goals against average of 243. So saved almost half a goal per 60 minutes per game, which is fantastic. And that would have been a year. I remember actually this year, I think he was, there was conversations about him potentially being in the heart. Same thing in 18, 19 an expected goals against of 330 because the team was so horrid, but an actual goals against of 284. So he was making a lot more saves and allowing less goals than expected. And you always want to have your goals against lower than the expectation. But then the following three years, that's three years in a row now here where his actual goals against have been higher than what's expected to be scored. And the expected numbers are always basically uh, scoring chances from high percentage places on the ice, essentially how the expect expectation numbers kind of shakes out. If you're wondering about that for those who aren't, you know, deep into analytics. Um, So, yeah. So to me, that kind of goes with my theory, how the last three years it's been trending the wrong way where he's performing under expectation. Yeah, no, for sure. And and that's why I wanted to bring um, that up as well, because, I've heard that argument as well, that maybe John Gibson's play has dropped off a bit because of the defense. I've also said this. We saw, we saw like a player like Harry price who saw his play drop off regular season. He, I mean, look last, last year, many, we probably, many of us probably thought the Leafs were um, going to move on against the Canadians because Carey Price was not going to be the same goaltender, this and that. And then look at what happened. Carey Price had terrible regular season numbers, but then when the playoffs came around, Carey Price was not even the same goaltender. John Gibson does have, he doesn't have Carey Price's track record. I totally get that, but he has shown it in the past as well that he can be that goaltender. And he's done it as a starter. I think that's where most people are going at with John Gibson is that this is probably out of all the options you can look at for the Leafs this off season. He's the only one that has a track record as a starter. Yeah. Even Jack Campbell doesn't. And we talked about this. He doesn't even have that track record as a starter. Cause even this year he was a starter, but he couldn't give you that full slate of games. Like if he's asking for 5 million, the expectation now is that Jack Campbell's got to give you starter quality performances in that he's got to remain durable for what? Yeah, I guess the minimum has to play 45 to 60 games, right? Like, or 45 to, to 50, 52 games. You got to get yeah. out, of, out of a you, starter, right? 45 to 50. Exactly. And that's, and, and look, I'm a big Jack Campbell fan because guess what? You know what you're getting, you've seen what he has done for you over the last couple of years. But there has to be some realistic expectation of this is what the Leafs can afford to pay a guy like this because there's a reason why they brought in Peter Morazic. There's a reason why they got they they had to shell out the money to get a Peter Morazic because truthfully they probably did not think Jack Ham could handle a starter's workload, and I kind of saw that when you kind of heard how Sheldon Keefe was going to, you know give them both the starts and how they were going to do divvy up the workload. And they weren't like Jack Campbell was their main guy, but he wasn't the guy in terms of he's, he's going to be our 60 game starter. He would just never hear that with Jack Campbell. 
Yeah, because he'd never – well, he'd never done that before. So I don't think you could just assume at 30 years old he was going to be able to take on that type of workload. So they had to do a bit of a tandem because it yeah. just the track record's not there. And you're right, it's here with John Gibson. So you wouldn't have to worry about having a tandem – per se with like a, a guy who can also compete with John Gibson. Cause you look at this guy, you look at the, the numbers for games that he's played. I mean, going back to 16, 17, I guess when he took over as the full-time number one in Anaheim, 52 games, 60, 58, 51 last year in a shortened season, 35 games. But then this year, 56 games, like he plays that traditional starter bulk load of 50 to 60 games, right? That that's, you don't see that too often anymore. There's only a handful of goalies that do that. And he's one of them. And, and so at least when you're looking at the pay grade, I guess he is going to start a bulkier game. So it makes a little bit of sense. I just am a little bit, a little bit concerned about like if the, if this, decline continues a a decline you know what i mean like we've seen yeah. three years in a row now where it's gone down like a, a, is it going to come back up like is this just a bit of a dip but it's a three-year dip you know like it's not like it's one year this is three straight seasons where he's performed below expectation and that's typically not a good sign so what what are you doing to you know are you marrying yourself because that's a five-year commitment at six point four million, this team's already cap cap strapped. That's a big time commitment for this guy. Um, David, uh, why don't we quickly discuss potential trade parameters? If okay. the Maple Leafs were to make a deal here, and they were to bring in John Gibson, despite what I said again, I was kind of playing devil's advocate. I wouldn't mind if they traded for him, but there is you can be weary about this too. What would a deal look like in your mind that would be uh, a, a fair compensation for both sides that would make Pat Verbeek and Kyle Dubas agree, shake hands, and say, deal done, and John Gibson becomes the future starter for the Maple Leafs? What does that deal look like to you? Give me your trade proposal, sir. So this is where it, it's so tough because – Again, the contract is something that the Leafs are going to have to they're they're going to have to figure that out. They're going to have to make the they're going to have to make Anaheim realize that six point four, it's it's quite a bit, right? So, like it's some I, I've heard some a lot of comments on like ah they shouldn't include this they shouldn't include this. I Anaheim is definitely going to ask for that first round pick. I think it's going to be the first thing they ask for. Okay, so if the Leafs have to trade a first-round pick, if I'm the Leafs, I'm going to say that you got to take uh, Peter Morazic off our hands. Like, I think that's that's got to be the very first thing Kyle Dubas mentions is that Peter Morazic contract, that's on you guys now because we're taking on that Gibson uh, commitment going forward. Then I think Anaheim, they're, they're trying to go younger, right? They're trying to usher in this new era with these younger players. So they're going to ask for some younger pieces. They're going to ask for guys like a Robertson. They're going to ask for a Sandine. You know, if I'm the least, can you give up both? That's a tough ask, right? That's potentially Rasmus Sandine, a guy that can be in a top six. And Nick Robertson could be a middle six forward. That's a pretty good haul there for Anaheim. And then the other thing I have to, I wonder here is how much of that salary you're going to have to move off. So are you entertaining a guy like a Kerfoot? Is Kerfoot the other roster guy that has to move to make the salaries equate? Because I think if you move Kerfoot and Mrazic, the cap hit for uh, for Gibson is pretty much settled. That makes the cap hit work. Um, that's a lot in my opinion, but I think that's what it's good. That's what I think Anaheim is going to ask for, because really they're not in a pressure. They're not pressured to move Gibson. They're not like teams are going to be interested, but I think other teams are going to throw a lot more at it. I heard maybe the devils will give up the second overall pick, which Ooh. if I'm Anaheim, if, if, if the devils are off in the second round, second overall pick run, don't walk. Yeah. I, 
I don't know how much I believe that. I don't I really don't know how much I believe that. Like for <laughs> the reasons that I gave, this is a, a goalie who for three years now has been trending in the wrong direction. You're going to give up the number two overall pick. You have to be getting a lot more back if you're New Jersey, if you're doing that. You're doing it for like Gibson and another player on top of that. Yeah, like maybe I guess if you're if you're all if you're doing a pick swap in a way, I suppose perhaps like number sure. two for I think they pick in the top ten somewhere yeah. um, in the draft this year. So I guess you're get your you would have to do that. Um, that would that. make the most sense if you're and New Jersey, but if you're the Leafs, that's you know you're gonna have other teams that are very desperate for a goaltender yeah. too. I I I don't know if he has that much value. Like goaltenders typically don't have a lot of value for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, they really don't. Um, Problem like, is, we don't have a lot of equi- like equal trades that we can say. Oh, this guy went for this. There's not really many goaltenders that have gone for. Like you look at what yeah. uh, Kemper went for. Like he had a reasonable deal. He was a really good goaltender, and that cost uh, first round pick and Connor Timmons. Yeah, like that. That's a pretty significant. But that's for Kemper, who was actually a really good goalie. Yeah. He- that was an interesting situation where I think they lost out on Grubauer and they're like, crap, Edmonton's also bidding for this guy, so they had to outbid, which, again, you may have to outbid for John Gibson, I suppose, as well. But I also saw some people saying, like, John Gibson might have negative trade value based on the contract, like 6.4 for five more years, and it's a big gamble. So it may not be worth as much as people think to, to take that money off the books for Anaheim. Like, literally take that money off the books, save them all that literal money. And because of that, it's not going to cost you as much to, to bring him in. That um, might work in the least favor. If you can go cheap on the trade, you, I understand the contract is, is something is, that's going to be hard. You can make the money work. If you can get Anaheim to take some of those pieces back. Mrazic would be the ideal one. I think Kerfoot's an easy throw in because I think you can, you can replace an Alexander Kerfoot. I hate, I know some people might think otherwise. I think he's replaceable. So you tell you tell Anaheim you're getting these two pieces. We can throw on a draft pick, and then you maybe you don't even have to do the prospects if that's what Gibson's value is. I just think that some other team will try to maybe like what did Robert Luongo go for when he was in or it was Markstrom and Sean Mathias, like. Maybe a second round pick was 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 added as well, but it, it that that's probably the last time we've seen like, I guess Corey Schneider before that, but that was a bit of a different situation. He was an up and coming goaltender. Like th- th- that's the thing. That's the thing. There's not a lot of you know twenty eight year olds who have been sliding for a couple of years that you're hoping rebounds and and you know it's tough to really get a, a established value on that. Cause we haven't seen that too, too much, but okay. Do you have an exact proposal that, uh, well, that you my have? proposal then will be Mrazic Kerfoot and maybe you give them a future pick, not in this year's draft. You can give them a second, like a conditional pick, a conditional pick, maybe in like 2024 or something like that. You think I, that I, gets it done? If you put conditions on it and that like makes Anaheim like okay if if Gibson like does this well or if the Leafs go a certain as a certain place in the playoffs then that pick gets goes from like a second to a first you can do something like that it just all depends on how many teams value John Gibson as actually like as a something they actually want to trade for yeah I think he has more value than that I mean I don't think Mrazek and Kerf would have much value at all. So like a conditional second round pick, that'd be tough. I think they would need, they need something pretty solid um, in return to make that deal. Would you have to throw in a Sandine? Well, here's the deal that I have that I have kind of crafted and formulated here. And it, it kind of goes back to what we talked about yesterday with me being okay, trading a first round pick to, or attaching a first round pick to Mrazek. So here's the trade that I've kind of, thought about potentially that we could see happen between the Ducks and Leafs. Peter Morazic, get that money off the books and also give them a goaltender that they could put out there that's at least NHL quality, assuming health. Um, 
Justin Hull as well, uh, a guy who they could, you know, it's going to be a pending UFA, someone who they can move at the deadline, but they also are able to get themselves, you know, a top six defenseman who can play adequate minutes for them. But assuming he just becomes trade fodder for later on to pick up another pick, third rounder or whatever at the deadline. And then I think you would have to include um, a prospect like Rasmus Sandin as well, because you are giving them Mrazic's contract. And then I would give them 25th overall on top of that, but you're getting Gibson and pick number 42. So their first pick in the second round as well. And we talked about it yesterday, how the Leafs have done a great job of finding talent in the middle of the second round, or even towards the end of the second round. And for sliding 25 to 42, um, makes some sense. You're getting a number one goaltender. Yeah, you're giving up Sandine, which is really the biggest, I guess, consequential piece that you're giving up. But you're getting Gibson, a, a guy who you think can come in and be your number one goalie. If you don't think that, then you're not making this deal. So it makes no sense if if uh, if you don't believe that. And to get a number one goaltender, uh, I think it's worth giving up Sandine and then whatever value from moving from 25th to 42. It, it, to me, it, it makes it, it makes sense. So Mrazek, Hall, Sandine, and 25th overall for John Gibson and 42nd overall is my official trade proposal to the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah, I'm see, I that could be enough. The problem I'm trying to figure out here is um does he does Gibson have positive value or does he have okay value? And I think that's the biggest question. I mean that that might be the thing we ask Alberga when we get him on. Yeah. Like, do T are the teams that are interested in trading for him, are they taking a massive gamble and giving up a lot or does Anaheim have to kind of realize this is a guy who's got a contract that not a lot of teams will want to take on and they got to be a little more reasonable in what they ask for. Yeah. I, I think if, if there's competition for Gibson, which I think there would be, I think there's a number of teams that need Edmonton a starting goaltender. Edmonton Edmonton, was on. Yeah, right up at the top of the list. Colorado might need another goalie if they don't re-sign yeah. Kemper. Um, so they could be in the mix. I've, uh, I heard Philly was another team that potentially could want to bring in. I heard the only thing about Philly is that they want more of a one, a one B situation. That's not really what Gibson's all about, but I can see. I mean, at this point in his career, he could become that with he and Carter Hart, right? It's a very expensive one, 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 a one B tandem option. It is, it is, but you know, there's, and there's a couple other teams that, uh, I'm sure we'll be looking at the goaltending position. The Devils, another team, obviously. So I think there would be a little bit of of uh, competition to get Gibson services. So I, I don't buy the negative trade value, but I don't think it's also like you got to give up a first round pick and two prospects to get it done. I think you could probably do a pick swap, move down the board a little bit, give up one prospect in Sandine, but then you also, you know, uh, they would have to take on Mrazic and then you get Justin Hall on top of that. I, I think that makes sense. As a deal, yeah. I, and look, you, you, in order to get to fix something, you have to either decide you want to invest in that by m- making a big trade like that, or are you more comfortable waiting to see what the mark, what the what the market's like outside it? Like, if maybe when Gibson goes, if there's another guy that's out there, which. I don't know who else that is, right? That's the there's not much out there. The Anaheim Ducks can easily right. go right in front and be like, there's no, like, who else are you guys going to trade for? There's nobody else. Come and take our guy. Yeah. You could exactly. easily do that and, and get a pretty good haul for. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. It's all speculation right now, but, uh, you know, John Gibson open to being traded. Are the Maple Leafs interested in him? We obviously aren't privy to that information, but we just let you know some of the, the good and the bad about John Gibson and had a little fun, gave you a little proposal about what it might take uh, or what we would maybe offer uh, for John Gibson services. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, in the comments, people. What's that? Just be kind in the comments. That's oh, all I know. Saying. Last time we got ripped for uh, for some of our, our blockbuster trades. That's ah, all fun and games. Let us know your trade proposals. What would you be? Yeah, I want to hear what you guys games? have to say. Don't, yeah, just, don't, get... don't just rip our trades. You're yeah. giving us something that we can rip back then. Exactly. We'll rip you back. <laughs>
<laughs> all right, that's going to do it for us here today in the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These Podcasts on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Make underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morasuti. Also, go out and smash the like button. Leave that comment down below and make sure that you're subscribed to the Locked On Leafs YouTube channel for your chance to win a free Austin Matthews jersey. Um, we did the first two clues, one yesterday, one in earlier in today's podcast, the final three clues coming later on in the week. And then we will finally tell you who wins on Monday, but that does it for today. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We're going to tee up the Stanley cup final, Dave teeing it up. It's going to be fun, but until then keep it locked right here on lockdown leaves.